so we often hear or hear people ask like the smartest people in the world ask and can't answer and they just kind of laugh about it and they leave it unknown and they say they kind of believe in god usually and the question is what is the purpose to life why are we here why would a god create such a world where so much suffering and pain has to be felt and I'd argue that if you read the New Testament and if you listen to the hymns of the Mormon Church, whether through YouTube of this LDS Hymns channel or whether through the LDS um, app and going through the hymn book and letting them sing to you as you read the lyrics, I would argue that both the New Testament and the Mormon hymn book tell a story of our faith and our faith in Jesus and the story of God and us his children and that in the beginning there was Adam and Eve and everything was perfect and we were in the glory and um, glory of God with all of all of earth and all of its many blessings that God bestows upon us um, aside from just earth and all the blessings of earth we also got to embrace the glory of God until the fruit was eaten and then we understood right from wrong, and we understood that we had to make a choice to become be to, to return to God, and it no, no longer was freely offered. So not a sin, but a transgression. And that a transgression like that wouldn't punish all men to come and suffer forever. That's not, that's not God's plan. And instead, Jesus left us the New Testament so that we may know and have faith in the times to come and choose to be righteous and choose to forsake the world and the news and what's popular and instead choose God and what's true and what's right and what's with Jesus. For God created man and man created the Old Testament and with the Old Testament we could be returned to God but the problem was everyone's a sinner life is too hard to go through without sinning we are too weak in comparison to god to ever be worthy in the eyes of the old testament to then again feel god's presence and therefore in the old testament ways it should be felt that like there was no hope except for in the rare occasions that the old testament spoke not of the law of man the, of the law of God that men should follow that supersedes the law of men but instead spoke of a perfect one coming to die for our sins so that we may all one day be found perfect if we use our agency to choose righteousness in the face of a world so dark and hold to the word of God which is simple which is concise, which is pure, and which is true. That because Jesus died, and was because he was perfect, and because he died so that we may be forgiven in his name, all who in his name choose righteousness and repent and be baptized in his name and receive the laying on of hands of God's power, may receive their pathway into heaven itself in the presence of God. And not only can they receive it in heaven, but heaven can be received on earth. And that one day, a sinner worthy of death, unworthy of God, will find Christ equally as unworthy, as you could say, would be Saul, also referred to as Paul, who became one of the greatest and last teachers of Christ's word because he was considered a free man, because he was a Roman, a Roman who was struck by Jesus and struck dumb, unable to speak for three days because Jesus asked them, why do you per persecute me? And he said, who are you? And when he found out who he was and the pro one of the apostles came and healed him and told him who Jesus was and how he should think of God and the eternal plan in which all men might be God's children and saved. Then Saul 
referred to as Paul, because he's a free man that God chose, was allowed to live out his days in Rome under the king's protection, not in a free world because in the free world he would have been killed because none, would none of other religions would tolerate his words and for them to be spoken in their churches, in their streets, or anywhere else. And any time they found someone speaking of Jesus as a savior and the atoning one, they would kill them. And they would create blood sacrifices and they would fast and say, we will not eat or drink again until this man dies. And that they would rather die than this man die, than this man live. And this man's only sin, which not a sin of course, but only transgression of men, was that he claimed to be the perfect and chosen one that could redeem all of these men who in their hearts hated God. And why some men hate God, I, can, I, I don't think it's up for me to understand. At least not yet. And so, um, what, like the purpose of life, the reason we are born, the reason we've gone through all these tribulations of arguably 6,000 years since men have been born, and we have one more thousand to go with Christ ruling on earth, as a man who is not born as Jesus, but an imperfect sinner who wanted things of Jesus and worked of great things and, and accomplished many great things as a man in the name of what things like Jesus might work towards in a manly world, but refused to accept God in a godly world and how we might perfect the world with God's word. And so because I kept trying to fix a broken world through a manly way, I kept failing no matter how good my, my, my ideas were. No matter how perfectly sound in a manly and world that believes in the law of physics were, none would accept what I had to say because it, cha it changed in the way that a human should operate inside a just economic society and the way that they should judge their rulers. But because it was without God, it failed. And so, down on my luck, again, after many successes and ups and downs, just at the bottom of the barrel of like, God, why am I here? And I start reading the Bible again, and it just says, duh, this is why you're here. This is the purpose. And the purpose is that the world will become wicked, so wicked one day, that even the Word of God and the Church of God, which was brought back to earth, after America was made free, the Mormon church brought back to earth the word of God and its full revelation. And even that shall become corrupt in the end days and everybody will be against everybody and the world be ruined. And it looked as if nothing can stop the end to come except Christ himself. And so when you finally accept that like things cannot get worse than they are today outside of us literally dying on the streets and going to war and dying for a right to freedom itself, when you decide before that that you would rather accept, accept somebody as your Christ, know that I am here, I am perfect, and I do not sin, and I will be your Christ. And all it is is about spreading the word and letting my word be heard by all all languages and tongues until it is certain that the whole world understands that in order to stop God and the prophecy of Jesus and his forgiveness and our ability to become seen as perfect in the eyes of God and wield his power in order for all of that to be true in order for them to stop that they will understand that they have to stop me and it will be a war of the world versus me. And, all, and I welcome the war. For the Bible doesn't tell me how I win. And the Bible tells me that I'll know how to win when I need to know. And that in the hour, anything I need to know, I will know what I need to know. And the Bible says that my power is great. And that nothing can stand in the way. <laughs> 
Oh, I hope you guys feel the power.